Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem B2 uh, from Putnam 2022. So the question is asking us to find all values of n such that there is a subset of R3 with exactly n elements in a way that S is equal to the set of V cross W such that V and W are in S. And this is just a usual cross product. Let's first understand what the question is asking us to do. So the equality gives us two things. First, if V and W are in S, then V cross W is also in S. So in other words, set S is closed under cross product. But it actually tells us something more than that. It tells us if V is in S, then v is equal to x cross y for some x and y in s so that's also as important as the other one so now how do we approach this problem the way i typically approach problems like this or problems on functional equations would be to try different values of v and w and see what you get play with it uh, list what you get and eventually see which ones are going to help and which ones are not going to help. You have to keep using these two facts that V and W in S means V cross W is in S and V in S means V is a um, cross product of two things in S. So you have to keep using that. So the first thing which is not uh, difficult to figure out is to replace V and W the same vector and see what, what you get. This Then you can swap them. And just repeat this process and you we will end up with this solution so let me write it down um, so let V be in S then V cross V is in S so that means the zero vector is in S now one other thing is clear if V cross W is in S then w cross v is also in s which means if you have an element in s then negative of that would also be in s if x is in s then x is v cross w for some v and w in s now um, this is by assumption Now, uh, W cross V is in S by assumption again. Thus, negative X is also in S, S. So if something is in S, then its negation is also in S. So in other words, if you have a vector in S, then the negative of that is also in S. Now, could it be the case that all of the vectors in S are in the same direction or collinear? Well, that can only be the case if the set S is zero. So let's establish that so that we can take more vectors and then we can take the cross product. So if all vectors in S are collinear, then s is going to be v cross w v and w are in s which is just zero so n equals one is a possibility um, s equals zero satisfies the given property okay so that's one thing next let's take vectors that are not collinear and take the cross product and see what we get so let and so now assume that n is more than one so assume n is more than one and let v and w be two non uh, collinear vectors in S. 
So we know that if you take the cross product V cross W, that would be in S. V cross W is perpendicular to both V and W. Um, so we would have a vector V, a vector W, and a vector orthogonal to both of these. So let me actually put it um, this way. So this is like V cross W. So we will have at least three different directions. Now let's take this and then cross with the same thing, same, same vector. So if you take V cross with V cross W, you get another vector. But one thing that we know is that since um, V cross W and V are orthogonal to each other, the magnitudes multiply. So magnitude of this is going to be magnitude of V times magnitude of V cross W. Now if you do it again, if you do V cross V cross V cross W, so that would be kind of my scratch work here. This would be magnitude of V times the previous one. And then you can repeat that, so this would be magnitude of V squared times magnitude of V cross W. So that means you're going to get magnitude of V to different powers, to large powers. Which if you, th if you think about it, either this approaches 1 as infinity or 0 unless magnitude of V is 1. So let's actually write this down more formally. Okay, so now that we got the idea, let's write it down more formally. Um, so let V1, or I guess I'm going to call it V0, be V cross W. Uh, by assumption, V1 equals V cross V0 is also in S. Magnitude of V1 is equal to magnitude of V times magnitude of V0 since V is orthogonal to V cross W. Now we're going to repeat this. Magnitude of V2, uh, again set V2 equals V, V cross V1, uh, which is in S. So magnitude of V2 is going to be magnitude of V times magnitude of V1, which is magnitude of V squared times magnitude of V0. And this is since V1 is um, orthogonal to V because V V1 is V cross V0 so that's what we have so now repeatedly define so I guess or if I were to be a bit more uh, use the more mathematical term it would be inductively or recursively so recursively um, define Vn by Vn equals V cross Vn minus 1. Magnitude of, which is in S, magnitude of Vn becomes magnitude of V, magnitude of Vn minus 1, which is, by inductive hypothesis, I suppose, this is that. So, Thus, um, magnitude of V must be 1 since S is finite. Since S is finite, you cannot have elements in S that have um, their, their length approach infinity or approach 0. So, so what we showed is that, therefore, uh, we showed every non-zero vector in S is a unit vector. So everything in S is a unit vector except for zero. Okay, now take two of these vectors. So suppose um, V and W are in S 
are non-collinear. Then we know that V cross W must be in S. So that means, and it's also non-zero. So that means magnitude of V cross W must be also one, which means magnitude of V cross magnitude of W times sine of theta is one, where theta is the angle between V and W. Now, since V and W are unit vectors, we get that sine of theta is 1. So that means theta is pi over 2. So, therefore, um, <clears throat> vectors in uh, non collinear vectors in S are orthogonal. Now, we know that in every in every direction, since uh, v in S implies negative v in S, and every vector, every non-zero vector in S is unit, um, there is precisely two vectors parallel to every non-zero vector in S. Now, all of the vectors take one from each, take one vector from each pair V and negative V in S with V non-zero. These vectors are orthogonal. We, we just showed that they are uh, orthogonal to each other. Thus, uh, they are linearly independent. Okay, so that, that means they can't be more than three of them. But what we have is there are n vectors in the set. We discard zero. We divide by two because from every pair v and negative v, we chose only one of them. So that cannot exceed three. Also note that As uh, shown, there are at least seven vectors in S. So the vectors would be V, W, plus minus V, plus minus W, plus minus V cross W, and zero. Thus, N must be seven. So therefore, the answer is n equals 1 or 7. Oh, and then we do need to give an example. s equals 0 plus minus e1 plus minus e2 plus minus e3 satisfies the condition. And that's fairly easy to check because E1 is E2 cross E3 and so on. Um, and that means these two are the only uh, the only possible answers. Let's keep in mind that since you, when you're trying to show that N equals something works, you have to show two things. First, nothing else works. And then you have to provide examples for that particular N that does work. And this brings me to the end of this video. So if you enjoy these competition problems, button problems, feel free to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.